One of the things that amazes me is how the law of attraction authors and the mind matter interaction authors that are sort of in the popular culture and the self help sections and the new age sections and whatnot miss the best research that's available on this topic. They're out there quoting Pear because Princeton University gives them, you know, tremendous credibility and all the experiments were done at Princeton. They're out there quoting William Tiller from Stanford, another major uh, university. They're out there talking about quantum mechanics and they're out there talking about things that are incredibly easy for anyone with a research background to shoot down. And that frankly sound ridiculous to anybody with a scientific or research-based education. Let me give you a very good example, and it's from a guy named Bill Bankston. Here's his contact information if you want to contact him from St. Joseph's College in New York, right? Not Yale, not Stanford, not Harvard, right? But nonetheless, possibly the person who has contributed most significantly to these ideas in our lifetime. Now, that's a huge claim. So let's take a look at what Bill has actually researched. And incidentally, Bill's a sociologist. So he's, as you're going to see, he's doing a lot of research on cancer and mice and things like that. But he's actually a sociologist. So he's having to collaborate with other people that have the expertise he needs uh, to deal with, you know, laboratory experiments. So here's one paper. This was actually a commentary that was sent in. It was a letter to the editor, I believe. Um, and it was talking about another journal article that had appeared in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, which is a very major journal in the um, sort of alternative space and a rather marginalized journal within mainstream science. Uh, but the stuff that you can't get into the mainstream science journals that's still oftentimes pretty solid research uh, shows up here. So he was this is him basically talking about his research, but I just wanted to give you a place where you can go look it up if you want to. Ordinarily, your library can get you access to things like this with no problem, lots of times electronically, you know, through the Internet. All right, so what does he talk about here? Well, his experiments involved a laying on of hands technique uh, that related to cancer in laboratory mice, and he's done this several times now. So he talks about some examples here. He says in four experiments, 33 mice were injected with lethal doses of something that was designed to cause cancer. And the important thing to keep in mind here is that what he's injecting these mice with causes cancer and causes mice to die 100% of the time. I mean, period, end of story. They get injected with this, they die. There's, there's no, oh, some of them survive, some of them die. They all die. That's what makes this helpful for cancer researchers experimentally. So these experimental mice were treated by laying on of hands, and you can see the pattern uh, of remission. So it passed through stages of a blackened area appearing on the tumor, then an ulceration of the tumor, then closure, and then finally a full lifespan cure. In another experiment, 98 mice were infected. Same thing, laying on of hands produced um, you know, an amazing difference in terms of remission, well, let's take a look. Actually, let me back up one thing here, and just let me just point this out. The remission was regardless of variation in group size, treatment length, or treatment frequency. All right, so whatever technique he's got here, it's a pretty impressive sounding technique. Well, let's take a look at it in even more depth. Said, so for example, 87.9% of the animals treated in one of his subjects went through, in one of his experiments, went through uh, the regression pattern to full cure. Now remember, 100% of the mice are supposed to die. So to have, you know, roughly 88% of the mice survive is incredible. And what's even more incredible, if you look a little bit uh, deeper into his research, Lots of times they were immunized, and if they injected them again with the substance that was designed to cause cancer, they didn't get it. Far more interesting even than that, I mean, that's incredible enough. And that's the kind of thing that you really never see in the spiritual healing literature. I mean, it's, it's an incredible result. But even more amazing than that, 
is that it happens in his control mice. Now, ordinarily, you have an experimental batch that you're actually doing the experiment on. So in this case, he would have actually been doing the laying on of hands on the experimental animals. And then the control animals are just kind of set aside. Nothing is done with them so that you can compare the effectiveness of the treatment. In this case, 70% basically of his control animals got healed as well. And in fact, Bill talks about the fact that he actually has labs that don't allow him to do his experiments anymore there because the other researchers are kind of freaked out that he's, he's going to you know, affect their experiments. I mean, they look at him and they go, oh, you know, you're dealing with this woo-woo stuff. I mean, you're talking about biomed labs. So, they're, you know, this woo-woo stuff, you know, ha-ha-ha-ha. Let's look at this guy over there who's, you know, and who's dealing with this laying on a hand stuff, right? And they talk about, he talks about the fact that often his, his healers, who are usually is the skeptics, incidentally, usually trained skeptics, um, those healers feel ridiculous sitting there with their hands around these cages, right? Um, but nonetheless, these people are freaked out enough by his results to not allow him back in the lab because they don't want him to be accidentally affecting their experiments. So a little bit of, you know, disconnect there. Notice the exception here, and it's at the very bottom. It says, the normal tumor growth occurred in the control animals when they were further away, housed in a different building, um, sent to another city, so forth. All right, well, let's keep looking at this stuff here. What did he do? If I were you right now, I'd be saying to myself, how can I found, find out what this guy used? Well, he published it. Again, here's the reference. You can go look it up. You can have the library pull the full article for you. We're just going to look at some extracts. 